Hi, this is Mark Evans, and I'd like to show you the program that I wrote called Spectral Musical Contour Explorer. So over here we have the zip file that you can download from my website, and if you double click on it, of course there's a folder, and if you open the folder, of course there's an application, along with a folder of examples that I'll be using shortly. So if you try to open this application to start with, you're probably going to get an error saying that you can't open it because it's from an unidentified developer presumably because Apple doesn't trust me, and fair enough, I'm pretty untrustworthy. But you can get around this. All you have to do is right click on the application and say open, and then a dialog will come up and you say open again. Okay, so here we go. This is what the program looks like. It's called Spectral Musical Contour Explorer. And the idea behind this program is that it is a means of exploring various musical contours using 4A analysis. Now, some of you are probably familiar with Fourier analysis, others not so much. It might be a little rougher going if you're not, but probably you'll still get something out of this. If you're a musician, probably the way that you'd hear about Fourier analysis is the way that I'm going to demonstrate here first, which is as a way of uncovering the frequency spectrum of a sound, like a trumpet note. Speaking of which, I'll open up a short wave file of a single period of a trumpet note. And here it is in the examples folder, trumpet waveform dot wave. So you double click on it, and a dialog pops up asking about the bin size. Let's not worry about that right now. Hit OK, and you see the waveform right in front of you. And you can hear what it sounds like too if you go to File, Play, Waveform. Great. Probably no more needed of that. All it's doing is looping the wave over and over, and it sounds kind of like a trumpet, if a little bit robotic. The interesting part is this bottom part, which is essentially displaying the frequency spectrum of the trumpet note. And as you can see here, we've got a series of partials. This is the first partial, second partial, third partial, fourth partial, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. After eighth, there are still tiny amounts of other partials, but they're pretty much negligible. Where all of this comes from, by the way, is Fourier analysis. What's neat about this program that I wrote is that you could turn on and off individual partials. And you can see up here the original waveform in gray, and in blue, the waveform that you get using the partials that are selected. So if I want, I can remove all of the partials and I end up with just a straight line. And so if I put back the first partial, you can see that you get a waveform that oscillates once over the course of the trumpet period, and which is a line so that it reinforces as much as possible the shape of the trumpet waveform. As you can see here, it's the tallest bar, so it's the most important partial. Not too surprising, but actually plenty of instruments don't have the fundamental as the strongest partial. Right here we see the second partial, and it's similarly aligned so as to reinforce the shape of the wave as much as possible. The fun of this is that I can select any number of these partials and add them all together, and gradually you start to see the original waveform reconstructed. And in the case of the trumpet waveform, once you've got the first eight partials down, it pretty much looks exactly like the original waveform. I'll go ahead and play it back. Notice how the sound changes as I remove partials. Or as I add a few of them back. So that's the trumpet waveform. Again, as I said, if you're a musician, this is probably the way you're most likely to have seen Fourier analysis. But I think what's a little more interesting, or certainly a little more novel, is if we go up here and load a MIDI file. So now we're not looking at a sound wave directly, but rather we're looking at a pitch contour, a kind of abstract parameter of sound. This is the amazing thing about Fourier analysis. It's an abstract mathematical concept, so you can apply it to anything that varies over time, or not even over time. So I've got Pop Goes the Weasel here as a MIDI file, and we'll open this. It asks for the sample length in quarters, which since my version of Pop Goes the Weasel is in 6-8, eight, eighth note resolution will do just fine. So I hit OK. And you can see that this is the pitch contour of Pop Goes the Weasel graphed on a grand staff. If you're still not convinced, I'll hit play and you can hear for yourself. Now again, it's gonna ask me for how many beats per minute and also for interpolation power, which is a question of how smoothly does it connect between adjacent samples? And I'm gonna have it at 50 so it jumps from sample to sample. So 
So probably enough of that. You all know how pop goes the weasel sounds. But again, what makes this interesting is that down below you can play with the spectrum of the melodic contour. What's interesting about the spectrum of Pop Goes the Weasel in particular is you can see that the fourth partial is the most important. So let's see what happens if we isolate that by removing all of the other partials. And now we see here a wave that oscillates four times over the course of the melody. And if you think about it, this is no surprise at all because Pop Goes the Weasel is a melody in four phrases. This actually follows the melody rather well, with the one exception being that in the beginning of the fourth phrase we should have a high note rather than a low note. So some of these other partials are going to have to take care of that. I'll add them in and you can see how they do it. Actually I think it's the first three that do it. Let's take a look at the first three on their own. The first one is small, but it does provide a boost at exactly the right spot. The second one also gives it a boost, and likewise with the third one. So as we gradually add these, add the most prominent ones first, we start to get closer and closer to Pop Goes the Weasel. Now you can play this back at any stage. I think it's kind of fun. It sounds like a drunk Pop Goes the Weasel. Um, I'm going to play it back a little faster than usual, and this time I'll give it an interpolation power of 1, meaning linear interpolation, because that'll help it sound a little bit drunk. So part of what I think is so interesting about this is that it's a way of analyzing a melody by looking at how it behaves on a macro scale as well as a micro scale. The lower numbered partials correspond to the overall shape of the melody. As you can see here, if I take the first four partials and add the eighth partial, you start to get more or less the shape of the melody, whereas the higher numbered partials contribute the local detail. So for instance, you can see here that the 8th partial is responsible for the E to G to E motion at the second half of the first and the third phrase. Before we move on, I also just want to mention that you can input a more complicated MIDI score into this program, and it'll just take the average pitch at any given time. So you could even put in an orchestra score if you want. Okay, so I want to quickly show you one more bit of functionality, which is that in addition to analyzing pitch contours, we can also analyze dynamic contours. So again, I'm going to open up a WAV file here, but this time instead of a short fraction of a second trumpet tone, I've got a file that lasts over a minute. Just a short piece that I wrote for the wedding of a couple good friends of mine. So I'll open this up, and you see that we get the bin dialog again. Now the idea here is that this sound file has way too many samples to analyze them one by one. So instead we group them into a certain number of bins and take the root mean squared amplitude or general loudness of each bin. So right here I'd say that a good number to go for is round about 200. And you can see that each bin therefore is round about 15,000 samples long or a little under half a second. So I hit OK. And here you see the contour of the sound file. Now I'll switch over to my other desktop here, and you can see this is what the sound file looks like as a waveform in Audacity. You should probably see a bit of a similarity here, though of course this sound file is oscillating around zero, whereas in the Musical Contour Explorer we're dealing with absolute amplitude. So again we have the option to play the contour by hitting spacebar, and it asks about playback length, and it defaults to the actual length of the file, so we'll just go ahead with that and play it. You'll notice it's just shaping the envelope with filtered white noise. So you get the idea. And once again, as with both of the other examples, you can pick and choose which partials you want to include. And if I remove all the higher partials, then I just get the overall motion with none of the detail. So that's the Spectral Musical Contour Explorer. I've been working on a number of pieces using this tool, and if you want more details, you can take a look at the paper that I'm linking to in the description. Thanks for watching.